Hello and welcome to the Humbats guide. This guide will be split into three sections. The first section will be on building, the second section will be on Humbats' passive abilities and basic attack progression chain, and the third section will be his fighting combos and mechanical tips and tricks. So let's get straight into building. For starter items in jungle, in conquest only, you're going to want to be getting Assassin's Blessing. In other modes, such as Clash or Arena, you'd get Attacker's Blessing here. Then, your tier 1 item is going to be mace pretty much every time. Then, for potions, get a healing potion and either a mana or a multi potion depending on your playstyle. And this will be your starting items. For relics here, you can either get beads or blink. If their mid and jungle combo is quite CC heavy and you know it's going to be a problem, you can get beads here. Otherwise, get blink. And this is what your starting items should look like. Then. Remember, as with as always, when you get a starter item and a tier 1 item, you finish boots first. So, buy warrior tabby on Humbats. You can buy Talaria boots, remember it did lose that 5 power so it's not as good now, but the movement speed is still nice for getting around the map, and for things such as counter ganks, etc. Then, you can choose one of these three maces to finish um, this mace with. Brawler's Beat Stick, obviously if they have a lot of healing or significant lifesteal. Jotun's Wrath will work in most situations and it will do fine. And the other option is Crush Up, this is if you're very far ahead and it will just allow you to snowball. Then I'll just pick Jotun's Wrath for the sake of it because it's one that you would pick up most of the time. Then your next time after that, pretty much all the time, is going to be Hydra's Lament. And these are sort of your core items. Um, but after this, there is sort of a core item for your fourth item here. Um, and it will be one of the other maces generally. Um, Brawler's Beat Stick, you know, if they have um, heals that are becoming a problem, say you're ganking a lane that's um, having a lot of healing and you want to counter that, you can pick up Brawlers or Lifesteal, or say if um, you realise a character built into Meditation, these kinds of things. Otherwise, if you don't want to do that, build into Brawlers or you're getting fed and you can pick up Crusher, the other option is to build into Transcendence, a massive power spike, and this will finish your 40% cooldown reduction off. Then, on to situational items. Obviously, Brawlers Beat Stick, a situational item. Titan's Bane, if you're going to be hitting the front line, which you can do on Hunbats. And if you want a massive power spike, Heartseeker as well, this will allow your abilities to do a lot of damage in the late game. Heartseeker is now an item that you can pick on um, ability based gods so they stay relevant in the late game with their damage because it obviously scales off the percentage of their health, which percentages in Smite, usually the rule of thumb is that they help you scale well into the late game. Then, another item you can pick up is Blackthorn Hammer, it's completely fine. Um, Shifter Shield 2, Void Shield as well, you're going to be in the middle of a lot of enemies, so this R will be getting a lot of use. If your solo lane has picked it up, you will be less likely to pick this up, although it's still not necessarily bad. And Sile as well, um, you just to note, you would want to pick up Shifter Shield and or Void Shield if you're diving the hunters that they have. And Sile is good if you're really having to deal with a mage, especially if they're fed. Runic Shield as well can do well here as a replacement. Blood Forge as well, extra power after you get a kill, it will help you stay alive in fights. Also, if you want to get a bit more defense, although in Humbats it's not absolutely necessary, although it is nice, and because Humbats is such a safeguard as you'll see, um, you don't have to get defense, although if you do want defense, any of these robes will do fine. Um, Spirit Rub, obviously if you're getting targeted a lot by CC, you're getting CC'd and then damaged whilst under CC. Mantle of Discord, this can help with a similar situation but obviously gives you more protections and will be useful most of the time. Magi's Cloak, this is if you're getting hit by CC, um, but obviously in Humbats you can escape after this CC, so this is probably better than Spirit Rub to pick up. And then Hide of the Urchin. A bit like a mantle of discord, although it will give the most sort of um, protections and health combined. It will make you the most tanky. Um, then for your second relic, after blink, obviously you would be getting beads. If you got beads early, you'd be getting blink. These are the only two relics you pick up on Humbats. 
So general building guidelines for home bats, try and achieve 40% cooldown. Don't go too much over cap, you can go about 10%, but any more than that and you're wasting a lot of gold. Power and flat pen if you're diving the back line. If you're um, doing a lot more damage to the front liners, then percentage pen, such as on items like Titan's Bane. And that is it for the building section on Humbats. So now onto Humbats' passive abilities and basic attack progression chain. Humbats has a sort of unique progression chain in that um, this only applies to the damage, whilst on other basic attack progression chains such as Susano, as you saw in my last guide, um, this only does damage. This doesn't do damage and the speed as well. So all the basic attacks have the exact same speed, it's just the damage varies. Um, they do have different animations, as you can see. Slightly different animations, the last one is obviously an overhead hit. Um, this is important because when you're clearing jungle camps, you want to be able to use this efficiently. Um, and also minions. Then on Humbats' passive, Infused Strikes. After using an ability, Humbats' next basic attack will deal 20% increased damage. Um, is pretty self-explanatory. Um, this doesn't have um, a limit on it. It's not like a high just lament which only persists for a set amount of time. After you use an ability, you will keep this until you actually hit with that basic attack forever. Um, just a note, in preparation for this guide, I did some calculations on Humbats' passive and Hydra's. Humbats' passive applies first, and then the high just lament passive is applied resulting in Humbats' base attacks actually dealing approximately 80% extra damage with both of them combined. Then, on to Humbats' first ability, Somersault. You're going to be maxing this one third. Humbats flips through the air, crashing down at his target location, doing damage to all nearby enemies and slowing them. I will demonstrate this. So as you can see, it's a pretty standard jump, um, just a circle on the ground. And obviously does damage and slows enemies in that radius. On to Humbats' second ability, Overhead Smash, you're going to be maxing this first. Humbats smashes his staff on the ground in front of him, doing damage to all enemies. It's very simple, um, it won't go off instantly, as you can see it has a bit of a delay. I will also demonstrate that you can move... You can actually move whilst casting this. As you can see, if I was moving forward, I can move around and aim around with this. You're not sort of stuck in the same place. Now on Humbats' third ability, Sacred Monkey. This you're going to be maxing second. Humbats commands a monkey through the air that pounces on enemy targets, doing damage on each pounce, hitting each enemy god only once. It can bounce back between minions that have already been hit. So this applies to jungle camps as well so on minions and jungle camps you can think of it like a naja ring but on gods it only bounces to each god once and pressing three the button again teleports humbats to the target um the most recent target that the monkey hit so as you can see it bounces between them and then if i press three again i teleport to him it's pretty simple then, Humbats' fourth ability, his ult, Fear No Evil. You're going to max this whenever you can, so put a point in it whenever is possible. Humbats summons a totem from the ground to ward off all evil. Any enemy caught in the radius is feared directly away from the totem and takes damage every, two, every 0.25 seconds. And remember, a fear is moving an enemy away. It's sort of like a reverse taunt. I'll just demonstrate this on these two Odin bots here. As you can see, this Odin bot will move towards that Odin bot, and this Odin bot will move towards his protections here. You can see they got feared away from the center. And that is it for Humbats' passive abilities and basic attack progression chain. Now on to fighting with Humbats, his combos, and his mechanical tips and tricks. So first off, with the one, like I showed you on Mercurial, Thoral, and Thanatos all before, um, this will be the same on Fenrir's one as well. Um, when you're in the air in his one, you can actually turn your camera to look around. This can be useful to see if enemies are around you where you're landing, or to see the enemies that are chasing you. You can also use this 
to whilst you're turning in the air as with Thor and Thanatos and Mercury ult, um, to land instantly facing the direction of whichever enemy is there. So if I was trying to face a certain bot, you can see I landed facing him. And obviously if you hold down the auto attack button, left click, when you land you will do a basic attack right after you land. Um, something that a lot of enemy um, a lot of players tend to do I see on humbats is they will land in the same spot on an enemy for extra damage um, it looks cool um, for some people although only do this if you can win a fight as I have had I have fought many humbatses in the jungle who think they're making a smart and intelligent play by jumping on me in the same spot but I just kill them as soon as you land um, Remember, with jumps as well, the most effective way to escape people is to jump over walls. Obviously, if you're getting chased by a Janus, um, this won't really help you much. Now for tips with his overhand smash, his second ability. Remember, you can move in it. It's important. If you're in a team fight, you're going to want to try and hit multiple enemies with it. However, if you're in a um, if you're in a fight with less people it's a good idea to use the sort of maximum range of this ability because if you're too close the enemy will start basic attacking you remember use the range it's a very easy to hit ability so just use the range um, now for humbats is three um, this is where sort of slightly higher level mechanics come into play um, so with Susano 3, I forgot to mention this in the guide, but when you throw um, Susano's 3, if you press 3 while it's travelling, you will instantly teleport once it's reached its max distance, its max distance, or it's hit an enemy. This is very similar with Humbats, however, um, if you press 3 while it's travelling, um, as you can see on this targeter, you see how these lines here are thicker these lines here on each side are thicker than these lines here these lines are a lot lot thinner now this is now this might just seem like oh a nice little you know design detail on his ability but it's actually very important if you press 3 while this is traveling when it's at max distance you will instantly teleport to the first target hit however if they are not past these lines, so for instance, if they were to be here, and I was to press three as soon as I have left, as soon as I left click, I'm going to press three. You can see I hit the second enemy. Um, I was spamming three then as soon as it, um, as soon as I let go, as soon as I sort of threw the monkey. So remember, so this is very important. If you want to land on an enemy and instantly teleport to them, press three whilst it's travelling. Um, if you're too close you won't teleport instantly to them now this is going to be very important when I show you um, the auto attack reset on this so remember with Susanna on his 3 you could also do an auto attack reset um, you'll have to watch my Susanna guide for an explanation as to what that is but just note that this will allow for two very rapid basic attacks in quick succession so I will demonstrate what it would look like if I were to say use a normal ability in between um, each basic attack. You can see there was obviously a significant delay there. However, if I was to um, use the teleport on it, so remember the teleport. If I was to do, you can see those were very, very rapid. Um, this will actually allow on a single target for you to hit three quick basic attacks. As you can see, three quick basic attacks went off there. Um, obviously this maximizes your damage as much as possible, which is very, very important. So sort of the combo, if you will, for this is just auto attack three, um, auto attack three. It's pretty simple. So you should do an auto attack, throw the monkey, auto attack, teleport, auto attack. That's it in slow motion. Now, tips with his ult for no evil. This is probably Humbats' most important ability, especially for team fights. Um, it's known as sort of a team fighting ult. It's very good initiation. 
and when you go into a team fight, you're going to want to blink and ult and then burst down a target. Try to hit enemies with this ult um, who have their beads on cooldown so they won't be able to escape it. So if I was to say initiate into a fight, I'm just going to get beads. If I were to initiate into a fight, I would blink ult as quick as you can. So I would suggest, um, like whilst you have the blink held out, like so, whilst you have this held out, you're going to want to have your um, other f an uh, another finger hovered over the four. So as soon as you blink, you can get it out. I was actually a bit slow there because I used my keyboard for some reason instead of the side buttons on my mouse. Um, so that is very good initiation. You are a good god at initiating with humbats. Um, with your ult, your goal is to try and hit as many of their squishy targets, so hunters, mages, possibly assassins, or at least three enemies. In team fights, um, you want to save your ult to hit multiple enemies. This CC is far more important than any damage you will get out of it. That two second CC in a team fight is major. And it is the reason why why team fights can completely flip and your team can win them if a good humbats ult is hit. Now in ganks you use your ult a little bit differently. Um, in ganks or fights in the jungle you want to try and make enemies walk into walls so that they are in it for the full duration because if I was to hit an enemy you can see this Odin ball that I'm standing next to if I was to hit them right on the edge they go out very quickly um, gods will actually go out quickly um, however if you were to throw the, like push them into a wall they're going to have a very narrow space to move it's almost akin to a stun really in how like narrow of a space they have to move um, they aren't really close enough to the wall there but they will be stuck. They would be stuck against this wall, walking into the wall like this, which is pretty much just like a stun. Um, and that's generally what you want to do with um, ganking. You also want to try and make sure that you are pushing them away from their towers, so towards your team's towers, so they would have a longer distance to cover um, once they get out of the ult to get back to safety. Now for combats as combos in a team fight. Are you going to want to? Um, I accidentally beads there. Um, you're going to want to blink, and then ult. Obviously, this is your initiation in a team fight. So you blink ult, and then you do an auto attack. Your two auto attack, and then you can either. This is where you sort of make a choice. You can either throw your three to as many gods as possible. Um, especially if you have brawler's beat stick, this is the best idea. Or, if an enemy has sort of gotten away from you after you've used your two, you can just try and catch up to them with your three. Um, or, you can use your one for um, an escape if the enemies jump on you, or to chase down enemies. Um, this is why you get blink on humbats. This is why you don't jump in and ult. Because if you jump in and ult, the only escape you have is the hope that you can hit your three on an enemy at long range and teleport to them, and then hope that they don't CC or kill you. For single target, um, oh, I'll just actually show this um, full combo. So you would blink ult, auto attack three, and then you just keep auto attacking enemies, jump away if you're in trouble. It's pretty simple. Um, for ganks, it can be a little bit differently because it can go a little bit different because you don't have to initiate a gank with your blink. Um, you can actually initiate into team fights with your three, although I wouldn't recommend it. I would prefer using this for extra damage after you hit the ult. Because when you hit multiple enemies in the ult, um, they're all obviously in the circle and your monkey can bounce between them all. So if I was to go on a single target in a gank, I would probably initiate with my three. You can do blink as well if you want. Um, if you want to use the three for the three auto attack cancels. But you would blink in or use your three. Auto attack, then ult. Um, if you throw your three at someone and then you press through all in it, as you know, you instantly teleport to them. But also, if you hold left click down as well, you will do an auto attack as soon as you come out of it, which will have both your passive and your hydra's lament on it. 
So you blink 3 in, um, auto attack, ult, auto attack 2, auto attack and then you can either use your wand to chase them down, remember it has a slow on it, so it can be used to chase people down aggressively, or to escape, say if their jungler comes in for a counter gank, um, or the enemy is like outplayed you massively, they've got their beads up for instance, something like that, although you generally want to try and um, gank people when their beads are down. Um, when someone's beads are down, Humbat Soul is very, very lethal to be hit by, especially if you and your team follow up. So I'll just show what this combo would look like. So I'll demonstrate on this Odin bot now. Something like that. And I'll just to finish off this video, I'll just demonstrate this on um, a bot. So you can see how much damage it would do to um, a squishy elite game. So I'll just go full build, you know, I'll get um, Heartseeker, a bit more damage. Um, and then we'll just get a Brawlers. Um, this is the Glass Cannon build. Glass Cannon builds are fine on Humbats, remember. I'll just level up all of my abilities. So see if I was in the team pattern, blink in. Dead. Um... I'll also do this as sort of if I was ganking the lane. Dead. Um, so I hope you learnt something from this guide. And I hope you can now play Humbats like a Masters player. And thanks for watching.